Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch and this is the eighth of nine videos in the Building a Wordle App clone series. In this video we'll be adding two more features to our app. First we're going to give our game players the ability to share their results using an iOS share sheet. And then we're going to allow our users to choose a permanent light mode, dark mode, or stick with the system decision to change the color mode. If you like this series please leave a comment below and give the video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you ring the bell to get notified of new videos. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. As we do at the start of every video, make sure that you start a new branch. Make sure you're branching from Lesson 7 and call it Lesson 8. And also make sure that it is checked out as the current branch. Now when our stats view is being displayed, we want to do one more thing. We have to disable the entire VStack so that no one can enter anything. So here we'll just add disabled when the data models show stats property is true. Now in the Wordle game, when you finish a game, you get to see your stats. There's a share button there that when tapped, copies your current game results to your clipboard. If I open a sticky, I can paste that in there and I get to see a game number, which is 218, along with my score for that game. On an iPhone or an iPad, I want to be able to share the code through a share sheet so that I can go directly to Twitter, Facebook, or email, or just copy this. It's a great use for a share sheet. So I'm going to copy this row here with all three of the colors used because I can use those to replicate this report in my application. If you return to the guess file, you can create a computed property that returns a string that will represent one of the rows in that report based on the background colors that have been applied. All I have to do is match up the background color with the corresponding color from that report row. So let me paste that row in here now as a reference. So I'm going to call my computed property results which returns a string. Next, I'm going to create a dictionary called tricolors, where the key is a color and the value is a string. And then I can define misplaced as the yellow square, correct as green, and black as the wrong color. Now I can return to BG Colors and then use Compact Map to map items from the colors to the Tricolor Dictionary and then join them together. This then will be one of the rows in our shared report. Now inside our data model, I'm going to create a new function called Share Result. First, I'll retrieve the latest stat to make sure that it is the current one. Now I'm going to create a multi-line string that represents the Wordle share text. I'm going to call it result string. I'll start with the word Wordle and follow it by displaying the total number of games I've played. And then use a ternary operator to display if I win the game or try index slash six presents that number out of six. Otherwise, I'll just use an empty string. On the next line, I'll get every one of our guess results and map them to another string joined by the new line character. Now, iPhones and iPads treat share sheets differently. On an iPhone, it uses the Present Activity Controller on a Root Controller key window, while on an iPad, it uses the Popover Presentation Controller. This means that we have to dip into UIKit to figure out what the key window and Root View controllers are. Now, to make it easier to reuse, as we'll use it in our next segment, I'm going to create an extension to UI window. So let's go to do that in the Extensions folder. I'm going to create a new file called UI window plus extension. 
I'll change the import to UI Kit and create an extension for UI Window. I'm going to create a static computed property called Key that's an optional UI Window. And then I'm going to do three guard checks. First, let scene equal UI application dot shared dot connected scenes first. The second thing we have to see if we can cast that scenes delegate as a UI window scene delegate. And we'll apply that to a new property called window scene delegate. And then we have to see if we can use the window scene delegates window to apply to another property that we'll call window. If any of those guard checks fail, we'll return nil. Otherwise, we can return that window. So back now in our data model, we can complete that function. We'll create an instance of UI Activity View Controller, where the activity items requires an array, and we only have one thing, and that's our result string. For the application activities, we'll provide nil. Next, we'll switch on the UI device current user interface idiom. In the case of an iPhone, it's pretty simple. We'll use the UI window dot key root view controller and present the activity controller with animated true. This doesn't work on an iPad, however. In the case of an iPad, we'll need to use a popover presentation controller, where the source view is the UI window dot key. But we also have to provide a source rectangle. So I'm going to present it in the middle of the screen using our global properties for our screen's width and height. And I'll divide them by two. and then set a width and height of 200. Let me add that colon that I missed. Finally then, I can present it as I did on the iPhone. If we're not on an iPad or an iPhone, we'll just break. All I have to do now is to return to the statistics view and create a button but we only want this button to appear if the game is over. So in game view, after the for each loop in the vStack, I'll create that condition if DM game over. I'll create an H stack and then create a spacer followed by a button. For the button label, I'll create another H stack. And the first element will be an image with the system name square.and.arrow.up. That's the share icon. And the second is going to be a text view using the string share. Now I can stylize this button using a foreground color of white, add a padding of 8, and set the background color to that green color, which is the color.correct. And then for the action, we'll call the data models share result function. Let me test this now on my actual device. When I run this, you see that none of those previous warnings are displayed on the console. And I see my word, so I can cheat. It is dizzy. Let me first make a couple of incorrect guesses. And then finally, the correct one on the third guess. My stats view appears, and the share button is displayed. When I tap on it, the share sheet applies, and I can choose to share 
say, for example, via iMessage. And when I do that, I see that the results are pasted in as the message body. Perfect. Let me switch to an iPad simulator and run it. Let me get to a correct answer. When I tap on the share button this time, I get the pop-up view controller. And because I'm in the simulator, there are not a lot of choices, but I can copy. And if I bring up my post-it note, I can paste it in. There you have it. The Wordle app on the web allows you to choose between light and dark mode. I'm going to go one step further by allowing you to choose light or dark permanently, or use your system settings. Now, I've already released a full video on that topic, so rather than reproduce that video, I'm going to refer you to that, and there'll be a link in the description below for reference if you want more detail. In the meantime, all we have to do is create a color scheme manager that stores our choice to user defaults. So in the view models folder, create a new file and call it color scheme manager. Change the import to Swift UI and then create an enum called color scheme that has an associated type as an int. Create three cases, unspecified, light, and dark. Then create a class called Color Scheme Manager that conforms to the observable object protocol. Next, create an app storage property using Color Scheme and a var of the same name that is of type Color Scheme and default it to unspecified. Next, create a function called apply color scheme. Now this requires knowing about the key window, but we already have that from the extension that we just created. And return UI window dot key, which is optional, overrides user interface style, and then apply the user interface style where the raw value is our color schemes raw value. Next, we can create a property observer for our app storage property so that whenever we change it or set it, we can simply apply the color scheme. And we can do that with a did set property observer. Now we can create a state object for the color scheme manager in our app's entry point and inject it into the environment along with our data model. So we'll call that state object CS manager which is an instance of our color scheme manager. And then we can inject it in the environment just as we did for our data model. And then in the on appear, we can call the CS managers apply color scheme function. Now we have this button on our navigation bar of our game view. That's this gear icon. What we're going to do is use it to present a settings view so that we can change the color scheme. And in the next video, we'll also provide a hard mode option. So in the views folder, create a new Swift UI file and call it settings view. We'll need access to that CS manager from the environment object. So make sure you inject it into the preview provider as well. I'm going to replace the text view with a navigation view. And inside there, I'm going to create a V stack where the first view is a text view with the string change theme. Next, I'm going to create a picker using the string display mode. And I'll bind it to our CS managers color scheme property. For the content, then, I'm going to create three text views for dark, light, and system.
I'm going to set the picker style to segmented and add a spacer. I'll add a navigation title of options and set the navigation bar title display mode to inline. Next, in order to dismiss this view, I'll add a toolbar and a toolbar item. And the placement of that toolbar item is going to be the navigation bar trailing. And inside there, I'll create a button. For the label, I'll just use a text view and use the bold markup designation of two asterisks surrounding that X to create a bold capital X. Let's add a little padding to that VStack. Now the action for the button will be to dismiss this view. So we can create an environment variable called dismiss. That is the environment variables key path dismiss. And then the action for this button then is simply dismiss. And then finally, we'll need to tag our selections. And for each, we'll tag using the corresponding color schemes enum. In game view then, in order to toggle the presentation of this view modally, I'll have to create a new state property called show settings, and I'll set it initially to false. Next, I'm going to attach a sheet modifier to our toolbar that'll be bound to this property. And it'll present our settings view. And then finally, for the button, for the action of the gear, we can toggle this value. Let me launch the application now. Because I have not done any settings, I must be in the system mode. And I can do a Command Shift A to toggle between light and dark. If I tap on the dark button, I go directly to dark mode. And now, no matter how many times I do the Command Shift A to try and switch, I can't. If I stop and launch the app once more, I see that the dark mode has been remembered. I find that sometimes on a simulator it doesn't get saved, but I've never had an issue when running on a real device or in the simulator directly after quitting the app. I can now switch between light, dark, and system. And it's only on the system setting that I can actually change based on the system settings. Well, that's it for this video. We're coming up to the end of this series. So let's commit one more time to our repository. We've got one more feature to add, and that is hard mode. And we'll also need to do some housekeeping to add that help screen and fix a couple of little bugs that I may have encountered along the way. I also do want to add one more feature though, and that's the ability to save the statistics to a location that'll be synchronized between all of your devices. So you can run this game on your iPhone or your iPad and have those statistics shared between the two. That's in the final video.